Hey, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320, and this week I have a piece of furniture that I did not pick up on the side of the road. This actually belongs to a client. It's a buffet. She would like me to paint it white. I have chosen Casement by Fusion Mineral Paint. I like Fusion because it has top coat in it, so I don't have to worry about that. This piece is in very good shape. I will have to do minimal work on it to get it right where I want it before I start to paint. If you are wanting to paint a piece of furniture of your own or for a client and you're just not quite sure how to go about it, stick around. <music> Because this piece belongs to a client, it really wasn't dirty because I think she was using it and decided she wanted to paint it. I still cleaned it because you want to get off any residue that's there. And I used vinegar and water. It's a solution that I bought thinking maybe it would be more than what vinegar and water is, but vinegar and water is really the best solution I think to clean with and all it is is one part vinegar to one part water. Easy peasy. Now I had planned on using my Wagner sprayer to spray this whole piece and uh, in order to do that I needed to use my Scotch Blue brand. Uh, it's just tape and plastic attached to it. It comes in a couple different sizes and here I'm struggling a little bit. It took me a while to get around all of those center pieces, but the idea is just to cover it up. It's really nice if you're going to use a sprayer. All I want to do here is scuff sand this piece. I don't need to take it down to the raw wood. If I was going to do anything else other than just paint it, I would definitely take it to the raw wood. It's a beautiful piece. I'm using a 320 grit because I don't want to scratch it too much. I just want to scuff it enough so that the paint has something to adhere to. Before I lay down the paint, I need to prime this piece. I'm using BIN from Zinzer. It's or bin and it is a really nice primer but it is like marshmallow fluff it's very sticky it's a shellac so I recommend it's it's kind of like top coat in that you put it down and you leave it you can't keep going over it and over it or you're gonna get some really weird texture and I forget that from time to time and really what it does is it just makes more work for you because after you cover the whole piece you need to go back between coats and I put two coats of primer on this piece you need to go back between coats and sand with a finer grit like a 320 or maybe a 220. It depends on how much texture you have and you want to smooth that down. Now Zinzer, you can get really, really smooth and that's nice. Uh, I am now priming the drawers in the same way. So in between again, you're going to sand and then you're going to prime again and then you're going to sand and that's when you can add your paint. After I finished rolling on the primer, I got my Wagner sprayer out and I left the sound on here because you can hear I started it, but I noticed that there's no paint coming out. So I'm messing with it a little bit to see if it's going to come out. And I don't want to waste the paint, but nothing is coming out. So I took it apart a bit, shook it up a little, and I did get some paint to come out after adjusting the little knobs. But as you see in a moment, it's not much. 
I try spraying it and then I realized that it didn't look very good but in the meantime the paint was starting to dry and fusion mineral paint does dry pretty quickly so as I'm rolling it it is kind of fighting back I got a little bit more texture than I had hoped for I made a little bit of work for myself that was kind of a bummer because it took me a while to sand it all out but I really didn't have a whole lot of time to mess with the sprayer so I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do so I took it all apart washed it all up and you'll see in a few minutes what happens next I'm sanding out all that texture that I just created and I started with a 220 and a 320 went back and forth and realized that my sanding sponges were getting a little bit rough or <laughs> not rough I should say so I got some new ones and uh, they it, it did work a lot better so you can see I'm frustrated because it's not coming off it's not smoothing out and that's not usually the case so I went to Menards and got some new <laughs> sanding sponges and work much better here I am going to I thought that I fixed this I actually you can see to the right of the buffet there's a little piece of wood there I highly recommend that if you're having trouble with your sprayer test it out on a scrap piece of wood because the problem with testing it out on your furniture is you're creating more work for yourself like I do all the time I did spray the inside I tried to spray the outside but uh, no didn't work again it started spitting blobs of paint so I gave up I did not want to give up because it in theory you should be able to spray your peas very quickly but if you're gonna have problems with it like I did I wasted a lot of paint I never use an entire jar and I did use an entire jar because I just really wanted it to work but in this case, it did not work, and I had to go back. See, I'm having to roll it again because it's spitting all over the place. But at least you know if you're having problems and it spits like that, you can at least go back with a roller. But I have a suggestion for you. Have a roller nearby <laughs> because that makes it easier. The paint's not going to dry and make it sticky. I've seen these sponges before, and when I was at Menards, I decided I'm going to try these. And this one's 120, so it's a lot rougher, but it doesn't have sandpaper on the sides. So I wasn't crazy about that because I do like my sponge to be covered on the sides at least, and it was not. But it did work well, especially after I was struggling with my older sanding sponges. It did come off pretty nicely, plus the 120 grit helped as well. But I did have to go back and touch it up again because in my the process of sanding, uh, some of the paint came off. <laughs> Typical. But that, that's how it goes, and it's easy to touch up. Not a big deal. I just wanted it smooth. Now I'm using the 120 because I had those rough spots after using the roller. Now after the second coat of paint, I'm not going to use a 120 grit because that's going to be too gritty, <laughs> too rough. A good system is to use a 120 to start with, go to a 220, and then go to a 320, and that would be in between your coats of paint. I'll be honest here I didn't want to paint these I thought they were beautiful as is and as you can kind of see they were very pretty but the client wanted them painted and the client gets what they want because they're paying me and it looks nice painted too but if you know me <laughs> you know I like to show some wood and I was a little sad covering them up but Again, 
Everybody has the right to get what they want and what they ask for and what they're paying for. So I painted them. If you don't have finishing sanding sponges like this, I really recommend them. They are in the description box below. There's a link to Amazon to purchase them. And if you do purchase them from my link, I do get credit for that. So if you're going to buy them, try Amazon. I really love these. There's, there's an eight pack of them. And that's the link I send you to. You will love them. They give you such a smooth finish on your pieces. You won't believe it. it. It buffs it out and you can use these on top coat as well. And there's a video for top coat that'll be at the end of this video. You can click on it and learn more about how to use those finishing sponges. Fusion Mineral Paint has top coat in it. So I didn't really need to use a top coat, but I did need to use something to give it a little bit of a sheen and make it even smoother than it was. And this is by Valspar. It's a sealing wax, sealing, S-E-A-L-I-N-G. It was really easy to use. It's kind of liquidy. It's not real thick. It's easier to work with. It's it's really nice and you can once you put it on you can go back and buff it with your uh, lint-free cloth wow it really looked nice purchasing new hardware my client wanted to keep the original hardware and I suggested perhaps we could paint it and she chose a color that was very close to this oil rubbed bronze I think she'll like it and it's a nice contrast with the white on this project I finished up the drawers maybe before I finished the doors so I'm putting the hardware on the drawers and then I'm gonna go finish the doors. These doors needed two coats of primer and I didn't put two coats on. I just put one. So I ended up having to do a little bit more work on them. A uh, couple, well, three coats of, of paint and a lot of touch-ups. But once that was done, I could put on the hardware. And this hardware, I actually put it on right the first time, but I doubted myself. <laughs> I thought I put it on the wrong way. And all I did was actually put it on the wrong side. Well, um, once I got that worked out and got them actually on the piece of furniture, I was able to close the doors and call it a day. to 10 because otherwise you're going to scream and throw the door across the room <laughs> because you have to get it just right so that you can get that screw in straight and it takes a lot a lot a lot of patience
Well, friends, that's all I have for you this week. I hope that you were able to pick up a few tips from this project. If you're planning on painting a piece of furniture that's already finished, you need to remember to scuff sand it and prime it before you put on your final color, especially if it's a neutral like white. Just a quick reminder, if you are wanting to purchase any products that I've used today or any other video, the links for that information will be in the description box below. You can always find links there for most of the products I use every week. Thanks for being here. See you next time. You can do it. Sun is shining.